have the Narcan kit with you. Right now, they're actually, I don't know how it is in um, where you live, Jake, but here in Quebec, um, there there's not a lot of um, injection Narcan going around anymore. It's the nasal spray. The nasal spray. Now, th that's what they give at the pharmacy. When you go in, you, you don't even need to have a um, um, Medicare card here in Quebec anyways. You can just go in and say, I need a Narcan kit because someone in my... Like, I know people that take drugs. And they they can give it to you and they can tell you how to use it too. So that's really cool. Well, is that the Narcan stash? Yes. <laughs> I was trying to do it slick while you were talking, but it's hard with this microphone. It's actually pretty good. So there's two types I have here, and this yeah. is really good to show people. In Ontario, very accessible. But yes, there is a bit of a global, I heard, shortage of the intramuscular. Um, luckily, it hasn't affected us in the front lines. We still have plenty that we use in our sites. We okay. don't typically use the nasals in our injection sites. Mm -hmm. Paramedics typically wouldn't go for them because they're so abrupt, but they work so well. So like the same reason why you as the lay responder should use this, the healthcare professional and, yeah. and, and veteran community drug user kind of avoids these ones. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, look, it will save the life. Yeah. It, it, and you're also more amazing. used to like using needles and stuff. I think it could be a little bit scary for anyone out there without a proper training and experience to like use a needle or it's and daunting. for many other reasons too. So like there's the trained. spray. There's yeah, ways yeah, to make exactly. mistakes with needles where this, yeah. the only mistake you can make is not giving it when you should i guess yeah, like, yeah, exactly. so the good news with narcan in general is it doesn't have any um side effects other than it could put the person into withdrawal so that's yeah. the one big thing and this is why we roll people on their side so here's what the nasals look like if you can kind of see here it comes yeah. with an instruction guide inside you simply pull the tab yeah. down, oh, down there and there you go right up their nose and it's mm -hmm. a spray whole dose right up the nose yeah that's it. And it I guess the only mistake five minutes. The only mistake is like to put it in their ear or their yeah. mouth. <laughs> don't get creative. <laughs> Just know? like Pulp Fiction had the needle in the heart. We don't do uh, that. No, no. <laughs> uh, imagine how anticlimactic Pulp Fiction would be if John Travolta just gave her a nasal spray on the couch and she was like, oh, I'm fine. Let's go back dancing. <laughs> oh my God. It would be movie. amazing. It would be amazing. <laughs> I would pay to see that. Oh yeah. It's, it'll be a great movie. <laughs> Um, so there's the nasals. Yeah. It's super easy. It comes with two. The rule of thumb is if you feel the person is overdosing on an opioid, they're not responding to you. They're not breathing effectively. Meaning you're not seeing their chest take full breaths. They're making gurgling or snorting sounds, snoring sounds. They're maybe turning like a purple blue color around their lips or face. Sometimes the nail beds. That is where you're going to go. Okay. Time for Narcan. If you are someone who's trained in oxygen and you're, you're actually a harm reduction worker with all those other tools, go by your protocol. But if I'm just on the street and this is all I got, if I see somebody yeah. is not breathing effectively, I can't wake them up. They're not responding appropriately. Mm -hmm. You can give one spray up the nose after rolling them on their side first. You know, you'll learn that in a first aid course it's called the recovery position. You can Google it too. There's pictures. Roll them on their side. One spray up the nose. Wait three to five minutes. Another mistake people make. They go dose, dose, dose because they're nervous and they don't yeah. want this person to die. But Narcan can take some time. And if you overdose someone on Narcan, it's not they're going to have specific harm, but you could put them in withdrawal. And that can yeah. be dangerous too. Yeah. So And for you as well. When and they for you. Up. And it's not, yeah, it's, it, there is a, it's not the myth that they hate you and they want to, you took their no. high away. It's that it's you're a stranger like, in their face and yeah, they're exactly. dying and they don't know you. Yeah. So anyone, that's why it's a harm reduction worker. Typically a lot, even people who don't use our site know us. So when yeah. I say I work at this site, I'm a harm reduction worker. They're waking up a lot calmer. Yeah. I'm just, Hey, I'm Jake. We're on the TTC, <laughs> the streetcar. It's I'm not known. Yeah. To them. So, and also yeah. one other thing that I want to point out is that um, if you're not sure that they're overdosing on opioids, mm -hmm. you can, you can give Narcan. Yeah. You can still give it. You will not like, have them get it will not bring them to a high you, you will not do damage by giving narcan to someone who doesn't need narcan no no yeah. it's actually and it will not work on any other drug so yeah. if you give the narcan and it works you know what that they're overdosing on if it doesn't work you're just calling 911 and that's the protocol yeah. if you're giving it and you're not a harm reduction worker or a healthcare worker at a facility you're calling 911 because narcan can wear off so you're giving the dose you're calling 911 
and then your follow yeah. instructions. Yeah. Um, great. So that's really easy. Um, I can quickly show people the injection one. Yeah. And kind of just, I, it's going to be difficult on this camera here, but I'm going to do And then best. after, after we have a question that I, I want us to answer. Is it one that we can't, we should answer now or should I do this? No, no, you can do that. Okay, you cool. can show the, the thing. So this is the injectable kits. I, this is the training one I have. So the Narcan is well, well expired. Good news though. Narcan still works when it's expired, like for quite a while. I if that's all you have. Numbers. Yeah. Yes, if that's all you have, depends. give it. Yeah. The, the way to know it's not good is if it looks dis, like discolored, it should be clear. If it, like in the syringe, if it's discolored or has particles in it, no good. Okay. Um, great. So the injectable ones, they come with um, a face shield for breaths. Now, of course, most people, especially during COVID, are not comfortable doing the breaths. That's fine. Um, if somebody is not breathing at all, chest compressions work very well at circulating the blood around. Perfect. And actually in getting their lungs to compress and move oxygen. But yes, that's in there. Maybe they have a friend nearby that is comfortable or a family member that says, I'll give the breaths, rescue breathing. Perfect. Um, inside as well, you have vials of Narcan. They look like this. Mm -hmm. This is where the training is great. You don't, you can actually, when you go to your pharmacist and ask for training, the pharmacist will train you in Ontario. They'll, they'll. Yeah, same here. You, same oh, here. great. Good. Um, and sometimes you get lucky and they come with these types of, uh, they're called yeah. like, crackers. If you don't have it though, the alcohol swabs inside. This is an old paramedic trick when you don't have these available. You use the alcohol swab. You yeah, because it's glass, right? It's the little it's vials glass. of glass. And you're going to be breaking it, right? So bare yeah. fingers, not safe in case it shatters or mm. the edge comes towards you. Yeah. So these are awesome. They come in most of them. If not, you can take the alcohol swab. Um, it's hard to see on here, but there is a line where the yeah, glass we see is weak. It. Good. Um, Sometimes there's a, a dot and you want to pull um, away from the dot or sorry, towards the dot. That's how you know it's the weak spot. So just simply right over the vial, pull towards you. There we go. Usually there's sharps containers. If not, the actual kits themselves are pretty good at, at holding like shards of glass because they're so thick, like the material in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have nothing else, put everything back in here. Mm -hmm. So now this is our open Narcan. The good no news about it, how easy it is, is that you're giving the entire dose in a vial. Yeah. At the safe injection sites and even paramedics, sometimes we give different dosing depending on the level of overdose. But the lay person, this person is turning blue or not breathing effectively, you give the entire dose. Needle comes out like this. It's mm -hmm. a three, mil three milliliter. That's what it holds. And you're only going to take in one. There's only one milliliter in there. So you have room to pull air if you make a mistake, which is great. So the needle, some of them, they come with like a safety button that after you've given the dose, you can yeah. hit the button, the needle sucks right in. Retractable needle. Yeah, that's, that's cool. But this one has a safety glide that I can actually slide over the syringe when I'm done. So the cap comes off. Always make sure there's no one around that are going to get poked with this. <laughs> and it's an intramuscular needle, meaning that you're going directly 90 degrees into the shoulder muscle or the outer thigh muscle. So now that the needle's out... You're going to take it. You're going to put it into the vial like this. It's going to be hard to see, but I'll do my best. So it's in there. And it's good to hold it on a bit of an angle to let the fluids fall. And then you're going to slowly pull it up into the syringe. You can see the fluid. You have lots of room to pull in some air, so that's okay. Try to get all of the fluid. Sometimes you can turn it a bit. It actually helps. Great. So I've got the entire milliliter in there. Make sure the vial, you keep track of it so no one sits on it or breaks it by accident. You can now see there's tons of air. So I'm going to push out the air. Now the good news, if you were to just give this with the air, it wouldn't kill anybody. It takes a whole hundred cc line of air going into directly into a vein to cause um, an embolism to hurt someone. So I'm going to push out all of the air. Boom, just like that, as much as possible. And now it's ready to give. I have a ball somewhere around here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just simply 90 degrees directly in. Boom. And then you just advance the needle. Oops. All the way. And now it's given. Pull it out. There you go. And then if there's a safety glide, flick it over like that. And it's now mm -hmm. safe. If not, you just press the button a little bit more and then the needle retracts. Those are great. And I've had it before, and this is rare, but I had had to give Narcan to somebody who really was unresponsive, but they were coming in and out of it a bit. And when I gave the Narcan, they actually were conscious enough to grab at my hand. 
and this can happen. Sometimes people are overdosing what's called a flail state. So they're not quite conscious and alert, but they are mm. mobile and they're not controlling it. It's called a dyskinesia that sometimes fentanyl and strong opioids can cause. So that guy grabbed my hand, but it's okay because our professional needles we carry in the sites have that button. So I pushed the button, needle sucked in, and now it doesn't matter. If he pulls that needle out of my hand, it's not going to be a sharp and I'm okay. Yeah. So be very careful and tell people what you're doing. I'm going to give you some Narcan. You're overdosing. You're not breathing effectively. Give it mm-hmm. and then back away when yeah, you're in that recovery position. That's a good point. Good. I hope that helped. Yeah. I mean, it's not the easiest to see, but yeah. I mean, just to talk through it and see the general motions. Yeah. Um, and like, you can really look online as well. Uh, you can talk to your pharmacist. There's even some organizations usually that do harm reduction that will give these trainings for free. And it's like a more complete training. They'll talk to you about like a bunch of stuff as well. That's good to yeah. know. I think we'll do more webinars that kind of break some things down.